Whether you already have the Beacon Mix Create, you've ordered it and it's on the way, or if you're just thinking about ordering it, watch this video. You're gonna learn how to make this the audio controlling experience of your life. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Joe Finley and today we are going to learn everything there is to learn about the Beacon Mix Create. You may or may not have seen my overview of both that and the Beacon Mix. That was a video I made together. You can check that one out up here. And if you got this beautiful thing, the Beacon Mic, you can also check that video out right here. But today we're going to focus on setting the Beacon Mix Create up for your stream, all the sources and everything you need to do to make your stream sound. Perfect. All right, so what's first is we're gonna bring up our software here and we'll have a look at the Mix Create in front of us as well. And we're gonna set up a brand new profile for it just so we can do this all from scratch. You can see I actually have two already, one for myself and one for when I do podcasts. And all I need to do is press the plus. And now we can talk again. You have to select this before you actually get to talk again. I've selected the beacon mic here. The cool thing about the mic, you can actually select any of these microphones that I have here. I could do the headset from my Arctis Pro Wireless. I could use any USB mic that I plug in. I could use a mixer that I plug in if I have my Rodecaster Pro out, for example. So you can see here we have the default four sources right now, mic, chat, music, and system. You can't change the name of any of these. You notice if I double click or right click or anything, nothing happens. You can change the colors though. So if I click here, I can make it any colors I want. So if I wanted my microphone to be blue like that, cool. I'm actually going to make it just gold just because that's the color of my microphone here. It's all really up to you. You get the idea across the board. Looking here, you can see these little chevrons. You drop those down. It's just to delete that specific knob so you can get that source out of there. And these little dots here to organize your sources so you can actually drag them around and put them any which way you want. And you can see that it actually reflects on the mix create right away. And now something else we can do, we can start adding other sources. So we go over here and if you've used something like the Wavelink software or Razer's software for the uh, V2 Siren Pro, the Rode Connect, uh, anything like that, you'll be pretty familiar with this kind of setup. So all we have to do is click the plus and now we have our different options here. So you can see the grayed out ones are all the ones that we've already done. Now these other ones are what's available to us. So we have game, browser, Auxiliary 1, Auxiliary 2, and Hardware. So it's worth noting, even though it says Hardware once, you can actually add two more pieces of hardware. So you could add two additional microphones or any other devices just like this. So if I added a hardware, for example, you'll see it looks exactly like when you set up the mic where you have all the different things here to choose from. But just for our example here, let's add a bunch of other things. Let's add our game, let's add our browser as well. And let's put them in an order that makes the most sense to us. So for me personally, I'm gonna probably have my mic first, then I'll have my music. Then I'd probably have my game, then probably my browser, chat system. Doesn't matter, you can do this any way you want. This is just how I would do it. So we have this all laid out the way we want. We've changed our colors or we haven't, we've done what we want there. But now it's time to actually get things to these sources. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna check some of our audio defaults. It's really gonna help us in the long term as far as getting certain applications automatically in place here. So we don't need to constantly go back and make changes as new applications come into play. So we're gonna right click here and open up our sound settings. We're gonna go to our sound control panel. So Beacon's recommendations are to take chat and set that as your default communications device and take system and make that your default device. So what that's gonna do is in a lot of different situations, like when you open up Zoom for the first time and things like that, these things will already be set up for you. So you won't have to individually go in and attach each individual thing to the different sources as we go along. So it's a really good first step to kind of get things going for you. Next, what we wanna do is we're gonna click up here and this is gonna open up your app volume and device preferences. So the first one we're going to work on actually right now is we're going to work on our music. So I use Spotify for my music. Uh, what we'll do is I'm going to click here on this default and I'm going to attach it to one of the stems for the Beacon Mix Create. You can see there's a bunch here. So it has the name and then Beacon Mix Create next to it. So there's one of the auxiliaries. There's our system and we go down and what I'm looking for is music. So I select that and we now have music. So from here, I can actually control the levels of the music going both to you and to me. So if I drag it up, it gets nice and loud. If I drag it down, it gets nice and quiet. But you notice that as I drag it up and down, both go at the same time. So if you click on the little chain here, now they go independently. So now I can hear it. You guys can't. Now you can hear it. I can't. 
If you're not familiar with this workflow, it's called a submix, and it is going to be a game changer for you if you haven't used one before, because essentially what you're doing is sending one entire mix to your audience and then one different mix to yourself if you choose to, because you might want to hear your game in your ears louder than you want your audience to hear your game. You might want them to hear the music more than you want to hear it in your own headphones, things like that. And from there, we can keep adding things. So you'll notice right now that I have Chrome set up in the browser already. So going back into here, I look under Google Chrome. It's already already been set up as that source for me. So now when I go into here and select a video, do is I'm actually going to have a four band EQ here. So right now I can only have two, so I have two more. And then I'm going to there, we can actually hear it going now. And again, you can bring it up right around here, bring it down. You should really go watch that video though. It's really good. And now when you want to set up a game, you could do one of the following things. So when you go back into your settings here, you can check your game here and then find game under here and select it. Or you can do what they recommend at Beacon, which is actually go into the game itself, go to the settings, find your audio settings, and then get it sent to the right source directly within the game itself. This will always supersede whatever you do in the Windows controls. So if you set this up for the first time, you don't have to worry about whether or not it's set up in Windows or not. If an option like this doesn't exist in the game that you play, then use the Windows method. And something that I've hoped you've noticed the whole time as we've been doing this, you can see our levels as I'm talking on the hardware itself and you can control it on either side. So if I use the faders here, it controls there, but also if I use the knob here, it controls the faders there. So it's always perfectly in sync. It's a beautiful, subtle little thing there that you can see the audio actually going. So yes, I just used the knob to bring it all the way down to zero, but of course we can mute both on the software and on the hardware. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we're gonna do a couple of different things here. So let's actually bring the browser back up for a second, but we can only listen to me so long and so many times. So what we can do is I bring this up, and I can mute it. So now it's no longer going to the audience mix if I click on the actual software. And if I click here, now I'm officially not hearing it at all. And you'll notice here that it's now marked as muted, but this is not the only way we can mute things. So if I bring it back, we have mute functions right here. So if I hit the little drop down here, we have four options. So we have mute all, mute to audience, mute to self, and mute to chat. So what those do, uh, mute all is pretty obvious. Basically, that source will not be heard anywhere. Mute to audience means that it'll only mute it to the audience mix, but I'll still be able to hear it. And then anybody in chat, if it's routed that way, will also be able to hear it. And then if I mute to chat, it means that you guys will hear it. I'll still hear it, but whoever I have on my chat won't anymore. So you can select whatever you want here. And so let's say I just say mute to audience here. See, it now says mute to stream there, and you see it also says stream here. And then when I hit that button, it mutes and it only mutes there. But if I change this to mute all and then I hit it again, you'll see that it now mutes to everything. There's a rumor that they're actually working on something where I can click this button in and that will mute to all. And then you can make this something different. So then you'll actually have two different options. Not saying anything, it is an idea that I did put out there in their Discord. They might have been planning it already. They might have heard it from somebody first, but as far as I'm concerned, taking full credit. So I think we have a pretty good overview of what this does now. Uh, now we move down to here. So we have our personal mix and we have our audience mix. And what we can do, we can set up two different devices for our personal mix. So right now I have my headphones, my beacon mic, these guys that are plugged in directly here. And then I can set my other one to whatever I want. I have a wireless pair of headphones I could set it to, or I could set it to my speakers like so. And then if I want to change where I'm hearing it, all I have to do is click between the devices. And if you have a piece of hardware, you don't want to keep having to go into the software to make changes and things. So instead of clicking here like this, you can actually just hold down on any of the knobs here for a second and it switches automatically. And then next we have our audience mix and it's obviously the compilation of all of these different sources going out at the same time. So you would then take this source, the audience mix, and you would put it to any uh, streaming software, DAW, anything like that. But also when you drop down here, you have a lot of different options. So you can actually send this out through your line out of your PC, and then you can take that and run it into a second PC if you're doing a two PC system, and then you can have this entire mix going into that second PC right off the bat. And down at the bottom here, we have a very important piece of the puzzle, and you're very familiar with it if you've ever owned a GoXLR or GoXLR Mini. This is your routing table, and you can see right here that every single one of the sources up here has a spot down here and three different destinations, your personal mix, your audience mix, and your voice chat. So certain sources are automatically 
automatically set to go to a source and certain ones are actually set to be muted from a source automatically. So we can see down here that these are all the automatic settings. The mic relay is not going to your personal mix because if you're plugged into your microphone directly, you are already hearing yourself. So if you send it again, that's a mic relay, you're going to hear yourself twice and you're going to get that speech jam kind of thing. And I'll watch that stream, don't get me wrong, but I think you don't want to have to deal with that. So they've automatically taken care of that for you. Now you can see down here under the voice chat mic, the only thing that is being sent to them automatically is the microphone and everything else is being cut out, which makes sense. If you're on chat with somebody, they don't want to hear your music. They don't want to hear your game or any other things that you're playing out. They just want to hear you. The audience mix just automatically routes everything to go through. You can pick and choose down here though. If you click any of these, it's going to automatically change it. So for example, if I didn't want my browser to go to my audience, I just click there and now it's automatically not going to go there. Or if I don't want to hear it myself, I can click there. So all of these different things are customizable. There are scenarios, for example, in my own podcast, Miscast Commentary, you can go check that out. I've actually recorded episodes with my co-host remotely. So I need to send audio that I'm playing from here to him. And I could do that just by turning the browser on to the voice mic chat. And he'll be able to hear what I'm playing from the browser in that case. And I'll be frank, in all the different setups I've had, I've never been able to do that before. And you will notice that these will appear and disappear as they are up here. So if I delete that hardware, it goes away. If I add something different, it shows up and it'll always just be like that. This is really well set up. Beacon has done a fantastic job of this. They're not the first to do it, but if you're not aware, the Beacon team is also the team behind the Go XLR. So there's a reason this looks like this. And the last little thing down here, we got this little drop down next to the voice chat mic and it says copy chat mic output to, and you can actually send it to another source. You might want to send it to another headset that's right here with you. If you were doing a podcast or something like that, there's an unlimited number of use cases for something like this. So the, the fact that they've even added this option is just really cool. It's not something that I actually need in my own personal setup, but if you have something in your setup that you use this for, let me know down in the comments. Okay, so we now have this set up the way we want to. We've got a stream that we can put out. Now we want to control it as best we can through the hardware itself. So let's think about some scenarios that we might need to deal with uh, when using this. One example might be, I always want to be able to see my microphone so I can adjust it as we're going. Because you notice here right now, I can only see four sources but I've got more than that up here. I have six. If I click this button over here, then I go through and now I see the last of them. But now you see that the, my first two sources are gone, my mic and music. So I can go back and get those. But I want to keep my mic up at all times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this little lock here on the software. And now it says locked faders. And what that means is that it's not going to move from this spot. So if I go to the right now, the mic, you notice all these changed, but the mic stayed the same. And if I go back to the left, it still stayed the same. Now, if I add the music to that as well, say I want to keep both of those, I go through those two change and these always stay the same. So you can set that up any way you want. When you are doing this though, it's not like you can take one on either end and then the middle ones will move around. So say I wanted the browser to stay where it was. If I click the lock here, it automatically moves to the second position. So that's how you manage that. But now there's one more thing we haven't talked about on here. So you can see a little indicator up here on the mix, and you can also see this button here that we haven't dealt with. This will actually toggle what we are currently monitoring. So right now, what that little indicator is, is our personal mix. And you can also see that on the software, where you can see that the highlight is around our personal mix. Now, if I change it here, I'm now monitoring the stream mix so I can actually hear what I'm sending out to you guys because our two mixes are different a lot of the time. I can actually hear to make sure that I'm not sending out the music too loud or anything like that. I can get it just right before I start streaming so that I don't have to worry about complaints and chat and stuff like that. You can actually have a good listen and then I just hit the button again and we go back to our other mix and you can see on the software that it switches back and forth. But my friends, that is it. What do we think about the Beacon Mix Create? I think it is revolutionary not just because of what it can do because other things have been able to do it but it's been software only now you finally have a piece of hardware that does it that isn't a gigantic go xlr or something like that it's something roughly the size of a stream deck that you can sit nicely on your desk in front of you with just a couple little knobs i know people like faders knobs are fine uh it is a gorgeous device it works really well it does pretty much everything you would ever want it to do and i hope you learned a lot about it if you did enjoy this video make sure to hit the like hit subscribe and the notification bell that always helps me get seen thank you guys so much for all your support with the videos that i've done especially on this beacon stuff we got one more coming for you i am making a beacon mix tutorial as well and that'll be the last of the beacon stuff for a little while and then we got a lot more gear and tutorials and all sorts of things to be dealing with in the near future so i look forward to showing you all that but until then gang let's get to work